Hi, welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. This video is being released on a Saturday. That means that this video is part of the catch-up series that I'm doing as part of the four blocks that I have had to skip for motor block kits. This is block four called Morning Star by Barbara Groves of me and my sister designs. In the previous two, I think I picked out my color and then I got it all cut. And now I'm ready to start piecing. I have 45 minutes before I have to leave and go to Huntsville to get uh, some PT and run a couple of errands. So we'll see how far I get. Hopefully I'll get pretty far. I mean, it's everything's cut and ready and I've just got to follow instructions and it's not a very complicated block. Those last words I know, as is quite evident in the uh, in at least two of the foundation paper piecing videos that I put up this week. Speaking of which, I have an apology to make to just a handful of you. Some of you are clueless to th that this even happened. But this morning's video went up with the wrong title. It went up with the title from the day before. When I'm posting videos up to YouTube, I hit this little button that says reuse details. And that just populates all the, the main criteria. I can just go in and tweak it. It just helps me to not have to remember all of the hashtags and all that. It just populates it. And then I go in and I just change the title and make some tweaks to it, right? And that just helps to facilitate things. Well, I totally, I was falling asleep by the time I was getting that thing published. And I just totally forgot to change the title. I put it at the top of the description, but totally forgot to change the title. And I didn't notice it until after a few people had already viewed it. I'm sure they're thinking, what on earth does this have to do with foundation paper piecing? <laughs> It had nothing to do with foundation paper piecing. It did have something to do with a quilt maker who is here local, who has a great heart for those in her life, and she likes to gift to them creative works. And this one particular one took over the span of 16 years. It's a sweet little story. Go and watch it if you if you like such things. I personally enjoy hearing people's personal stories. Uh, so my previous line of work was working as a personal historian, so. I kind of like getting to know people and seeing little bits and pieces of what makes them tick and sharing that with others. At the end of that interview, I met somebody who I'd like to do an interview with and she agreed to wholeheartedly. So we'll have to get that figured out. I do like doing them, maybe one a month or one a quarter. I don't know. We'll get that figured out. But every once in a while, we'll see a surprise one pop up. So stay tuned. Enough of things we've already done. Let's see what I can get done on this. So each Saturday, I'm doing a different segment. I'm just moving the needle a little bit. I really didn't have time in my week to add another series, a video series, but I needed to catch up on the blockheads also. So I'm making it work. I'm just moving the needle a little bit every week, not overwhelming myself because I still got to feed myself, go to the grocery store, clean my house, clean my clothes, take care of my dog, all those things, you know. So we're just moving the needle where we can. And today we're putting together block four. All right, we are putting our B's on our A's. As quickly as we can because I forgot that I had not ironed my shirt yet and I had to do that so now we only have like 20 minutes I don't like this foot on this brother because I can't maybe I need to do it with my fingers where I just barely raise it instead of this knee press not so sure I'm a big fan of the knee press all oh, this is brand new technology for me I'm on a 1.6 stitch because I like that, I think, especially on these little bitty pieces. Okay, let's do the next one. I'm trying to pay attention to the orientation that I had, the floral, the square, because not that it really matters that much because it's just a random floral, but there is a little bit of direction to that fabric. And I think I had them all going in one specific direction. So you can't, with a knee press, you can't do a gentle lift and position your fabric. With that one, my quarter inch seam is a little heavy. Not gonna be the end of the world. So like that, like that, and this. Goes like that. Okay. I do like how my men's shirts background fabric and my Moda shoreline fabrics go together to create a blended background. I almost used my knee press again. 
It does not work that way, Don. I saw four. Okay. Next, we add our C on to these, and then we will have our corner blocks. Got to make sure I leave time to walk Zoe out too, because I'll be gone for a little bit. Okay. This was definitely my last one that I just did. Does it matter if I press this open or not? I do like pressed open seams. I'm going to put it like that. Okay, if this was, just get my orientation. Yeah, this then goes here. This would have been the one before it, and it would have been in the bottom right hand corner. And so, Let's take off that little bit of thread. I don't like threads hanging around. This would have been in the bottom right hand corner. And so that would have been like that. And my C piece then goes here. Just finger pressing that because it's, it's working. Doesn't always work. Some fabrics are kind of resistant, but this is working just fine. Holding it together right where the seam is pressed open, finger pressed open, all the way to the point that it makes it into the sew machine foot. I kind of feel like it's trying to go askew, so I'm going to straighten it up. Next would have been in my top right. Short one that would have been like that. So that goes, yes. All I gotta do is look at my design board. I don't know why I'm looking at that paper. Once I let go of the fabric, whatever I'm holding on to, I do like to stop the stitching and just realign things, make sure nothing shifted when I let go. our last one. Come on, open up. Love me some Karen Buckley scissors. I can't recall the name of the um, scissors right now, like Guggenheim or something like that. Those of you who have those, if you could report to me what you think about them, in comparison to some of the ones of um, Karen K. Buckley, the longer ones, the shears, I'd greatly like. To, I, I would greatly appreciate it. I would like to know. So, if anybody has that experience, please share your information with the rest of us. Get all four of those done. I'm going to press them quickly. These are cute, right? Little bitty corner squares. And I have, I really should stop but I want to at least start my next unit. Well, okay, let me put this where it belongs. I'm follow my pattern again. Yeah, top left. Nope. Yes, bottom right. And Yes, I know sometimes I pay attention to things that are like not going to be noticeable later on in life. Yeah, this one I wanted there. This one goes here. 
We'll show those to you later. We'll pay attention to the direction. Right now, let me start my next one. What is next? Okay, I'm not trimming those right now. On the wrong, I gotta draw my lines. Okay, that's a stage I can do. On the wrong side of each E square, draw a line from one corner of the opposing corner as shown. Da, da, da. What are my E squares? E, I'm in, I, I feel rushed. E is my pink. So that's when I can make mistakes. So it's good to not do anything when you're rushed that's too permanent. I'm going to use a pencil. I haven't used a pencil yet. Let's see how well that marks. Be right back. Okay, I am going to see how the pencil works because I am curious. But um, also, I know that my E is my pink and I draw a diagonal. And since there's no fabric pattern, so there's no pattern design on this fabric, I feel comfortable that I can go ahead and use my permanent pen, even though I'm in a rush. I think I fully understand the pattern right now. Oh, that works beautifully. Didn't know. Still don't know that it would come out any easier. I do like this little ruler where you can use that diagonal line right there. That's so nice. When you use it properly, it just, the edge goes from corner to corner. Normally I do this on my little wool mat. On this table surface, it wants to slide around a little bit. Okay, this is a mistake I'm possibly making, but it won't really matter. I am, uh, I've been not been paying attention to which side is the right side to feel the difference to really know, and it really won't make that much difference when it's all said and done. You can see a little bit of a nap on the front side. Okay, that's done. Do I have time to do anything else? With right sides together, align two E squares in opposite corners of the D square as shown. What is my D square? D square is my shoreline background floral. I can do that. Now, do I do it to the front or the back? Right sides together, right sides together. I had drawn on my right side, by the way. Ah, all right. You gotta have some. You gotta have something calling your name to get back here, right? So I'm gonna stop. I have moved the needle and I've set myself up for success. And that is the name of the game on these Saturday videos. All right, I'm going to head off to town. I'm going to have coffee with a friend I've not seen in about a decade. I have left time in my schedule to go see a friend I haven't seen in, um, a, gosh, maybe a decade. I don't know. No. Yeah, probably close to a decade since I've seen her. I'm telling you, I fell out of circulation with my illnesses and uh, surgeries and recoveries and all the different things. So I'm trying to make sure I circle back around to see people, people that have been important to me. Just like I'm moving the needle on my projects here, I'm moving the needle in that regard too. Uh, little by little, I'm making contact with you know, individuals who matter to me and they probably think that I was I intentionally fell off the ends of the earth and that I didn't care to connect with them, but that wasn't the case. So I better get, I gotta take care of Zoe first. For you, it'll just be a second. See you soon. I am back from my whirlwind trip into Huntsville. I sat down here to get started and realize what you guys probably already know when you watch that last video clip. I was, what was I saying? I was saying, I'm in a rush. I shouldn't make any moves that are permanent that I can't undo. Because when you're in a rush, you're not thinking clearly. And I was in a rush and I was not thinking clearly. Let me show you. See this? See how nice and neatly I stayed on the line when I sewed that? That's not where I was supposed to sew. 
I was supposed to sew on either side of it, a quarter inch, a scant quarter inch away from it. I knew that. Fortunately, it won't matter because I will just cut on that line and it won't make any difference whatsoever. Um, whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever. But it just goes to show you when you're rushed or too tired is when you need to step away from the scissors, <laughs> the needle and thread and the machines. Oh boy. It, and I don't have to, you know, nothing is wasted. So it's okay. So I just turned my lights back on, which powered my machines. I need to figure out how to adjust my machine so that when it turns on, it gets set to my stitch, my preferred stitch length. There's a way to do that. It's right now set at 2.5. So I need to find how to do that. Right now, I'm just trying to remember to change it. I'm at 1.8 now. Okay. My scant quarter inch, I, I'm not good with this foot of really gauging just where a quarter inch is, much less a scant quarter inch. Quarter inch I can actually get pretty good, but this scant quarter inch business, I'm just not good at. I'm gonna try to do better with this one. So that one was basically just an eighth. Looks like a clear eighth. <laughs> Do you need something, girlfriend? I'm coming. That looks much better. So this, I don't know if you can tell, this is the scant quarter over here that looks more like a scant quarter, and this is the one that looks like an eighth. Okay, okay, we can go. Okay, Zoe is outside barking at some animal, which is actually makes me feel good. For her to feel up to just going outside and being a dog. So I'm cutting on the drawn line, which was my original sewn line, which was wasted thread. Okay. All right. Going to take that over to the um, ironing station and iron that open. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to. It's so little. I'm just going to iron it to one side towards towards the pink. Next phase, we take one of our E squares, which is our pink square, and we put it right there. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sew a scant quarter inch on either side of that line, and then we'll slice it apart on that line, and then we will have, we will have a flying geese, see? So when you do this, you wanna make sure that, you know, you've marked well, so that your drawn line is up into that corner, down into that corner, and it's falling evenly between those two. And mine needs to be budged a little bit right there. So I don't know if you can see, but my, my pencil line is falling right to that point where these two units hit. All right, there we go. That's what we've got. Now I'm just gonna take my I could use my little ones, but I'm just going to use this pair of scissors and just cut on that drawn line and that separates them. There we go. I'm going to go press that open and we have two flying geese. I'm going to wait to go to the ironing station until I get this one done though. See how the pencil line goes right to the tip of the pink? And then that goes right to the peak of the fabric beneath it. And then you follow that down to the bottom. And if you put some light behind it, you can see that the drawn line goes right into the peak between these two things. You can barely see it. Can you hear my Zoe out there? outside being a dog which is great
All right. Get these all pressed open and get them. I'm going to wait to trim them to size until I get the next. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to do this one stage at a time. The reason what I was about to say, remember on this one, we've got two sets of flying geese. There's flying geese here and there's a flying geese here. So two different ones. So I've got one of them, one set of all four done, but I just need to press them and trim them. I was about to say I'm going to get these others done and then trim them all at the same time. But since I am kind of in a hurried mode, I don't want to, I just want to take things step by step and make sure I trim these to the right size. Okay, just to show you guys that this is real life. What I am brushing off of here is from the project that I was doing two days ago. Yes, it is still here, even though I've done other things. This is real life, and I don't mean to sound snooty, but when you're doing what I'm doing, <laughs> you can then you can cast a stone. Uh, and what I did yesterday was a nine hours of editing of a video that really wasn't planned, it was not part of my schedule at all, and I made it happen. I'm telling you, several things going on making a difference in my life to what time I have and making me feel kind of hurried look at that do you see what I see I see this point falling this I see this line falling right on that stitch line and this line falling right on that stitch line and the the um and the valley of those two fitting right there Everything is lining up beautifully. So I know I can cut that. Doesn't matter. I don't have to know the length or width of this rectangle yet because that tells me all I need to know. I need to cut this a quarter inch away from where that point is. And I do like my little my little rotary cutter for these little bitty projects when you're doing the little things. But what dimensions am I supposed to have? Trim it to one and a half two and a half. One and a half to two and a half. Okay. So what I've done, you can see this, this black line needs to fall right in the valley of those two diagonal lines. And it does. And that's one and a half inches over. Is this one and a half from there? I only need, what did it say? Two and a half. So I need one and a quarter from here and one and a quarter from there. But all I know right now is I need this line to be parallel to that one. So I don't worry about cutting that way just yet. Okay, now. I could have, I could have slid this over. So I need to be one and a quarter from that center point right there, right? Okay. So we know this line and this line are parallel, all is good. I need to be one and a quarter over. I'm a half from there and I'm three quarters from here. That is one and a quarter. Just making sure that everything's going, since there's not a line drawn through there, you just have to eye it really well. You have to project that there's a line going right through there. Okay, from right here over is three quarters and that's a half, so that is one and a quarter. Do I believe in practicing good habits of cleaning up after myself? Yes, 
So this debris here, over here, should not be here when I come back in the next day, yes. But right now I am the editor, chief content creator, <laughs> and doing all the things and trying to do other stuff too. So I wanna make sure I get in bed before 2 a.m. I've walked away from a couple of messes and left them. Yes, it drives me crazy. That's why I'm talking about it. If it didn't bother me, I wouldn't be addressing it. Okay. I am one and a quarter over. And so I can cut this way and that way. I'm going to make sure that my... First thing I do is to make sure I've got a good line that's a quarter inch away from those points. That's what I'm doing to each unit before I make any other cuts. That's where I start my cutting, cut, start my trimming. Here, this way, I like this better. So that's got a white line that goes all the way through. On this side of the ruler, can you see that? There's a white line that hits that one and a quarter right there and so i put that in that valley that's great should have been using that all along yay okay same thing over here putting that white line in that valley making sure this is flush and that's flush against its lines over there Okay, each of these little pretties is exactly one and a half by two and a half. Aren't they pretty? This is my men's shirt pink, and this is my shoreline motor fabric by Camille Ross Kelly, the, my background fabric. Aren't they pretty? Well, they are. Okay, we got another set to make. We have to make our FG flying units. And they're supposed to be exactly the same size as these. So we just rinse and repeat. Okay, we are going to do our next set. This is not really directional. It does feel like it's going, it is going that way to me. I don't really think that it matters in my flying geese. I'm not going to worry about it today. There's going to be another day whenever I worry about such things and I should be marking on the back side. Making sure my line goes from one point to the other. Not off to the side, right on it. It matters. Making sure that you're fold lines and your cut lines are not off by the width of a thread matters. The width of your thread matters if it's thin or not. One lays there goes nice and neatly in the corner. I could pin these, but I don't need to. As Dave says from Dave's Crafts Room, there's not gonna be an earthquake between here and the feed dogs. If there is, I've got other things to worry about. I do not need pins. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna sew on a, not a full quarter on either side. My problem is gauging on this new machine with this new foot, where that is, is something I'm still trying to figure out. I tend to get a really beautiful one eighth inch seam, which is not ideal, but it's also not the end of the world.
Okay, we got both of those done. We're pressed. I think I was actually supposed to press towards the green. Oh, did it say? Yeah, I'm supposed to press towards the triangles. Let me go back and press that correctly. I'm not quite sure why it matters, but I'm going to do it like it told me to do it and pay attention as I'm assembling the block why that might have mattered. Okay, I was supposed to actually press it towards the triangles. I initially pressed it towards the big triangle. I went back to flip that over and it wanted to separate on its own and press open, so I just did that. We'll see if it really matters. I want to pay attention whenever I build the block. I could probably sit here and study it right now and figure that out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to push forward and, on what I'm doing. See how we have our drawn line? going right down the middle and we want to put it right here so our drawn line and that goes to that point our drawn line goes to the point which lines up directly on the point of this big pink triangle it comes all the way down and lines up at the point and we can kind of see that looking from the back side it's just barely visible from my naked eye that there's that I'm right in the middle but the camera may not be picking it up, but I can tell that my drawn line hits right there in that valley. Okay, we're gonna sew on quarter inch on either side so that whenever I'm done, it's a scant quarter inch again, remember, that's what we're gonna have. Do one side of the other a minute, and then we'll flip it over no need to break the thread prematurely. Let me get this side. Get rid of all these little Pieces of thread need to get out of my get out of my face. I don't like little pieces of thread popping around all over. Okay, I'm gonna cut that open. Just don't, it's not hard to cut right there, but it is giving some resistance because it's multiple layers. So I'm just making sure that whenever I press harder, I don't go crooked. So I'm just sneaking up on it from both sides. Okay, I'm going to press these and trim them. I really should have recorded trimming these up because I did a better and more, a smoother job this time and it would have been better video, but I thought, oh, I've already shown that to them with the other set. I don't need to show it to them again. That way I got to leave the lights and the camera where they were, but I should have. So what I did for um, efficiency is I lined them all up, not really, not necessarily lined them, but in sequential order, I did the same cutting for all four so that my ruler and my um, rotary collar were all in the same orientation. I didn't have to refine where, what I was looking at on my ruler. So on all of them, I cut this side first. You know, I found that my uh, V shape on my ruler was inside this V shape going right into that uh, valley of that V and made sure I was cut, cutting a quarter away. So I refound on that ruler where the white line was on the one and a quarter inch mark. And that's what needed to be here to be cut, to cut on this side. So I cut all of what I'm considering the right side of all the flying geese that way. And then I flipped it and went that way with it and put that quarter inch line there again. And since it was a white line that went all the way through, I could make sure it was in the exact spot it needed to be. 
So now I am set up for success and I've pressed them open. What I did this time is, you know, I do have these pressed open and on this side, I did not press open. I still could, um, you know, the instructions say to press to the triangle. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's so tedious, those little bitty seams, because it's, it's a scant quarter inch. It's not an eighth, and it's somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it. There's it's not a lot. It's thin fabrics. It's not a lot of uh, bulk. Okay, we are ready. We are ready, ready, ready. Let's take a look at what we're ready for. So I'm going to lay that out like that on all four. Sew these two together. I'll show you that. And then, then sew together the two that are here, the two that are here, the two that are there. And then I will have a complete row of things I can stitch together on all three rows. And then I will have three rows. And then I will just stitch with this row to this one and this to that. Wow, that easy. Easy peasy. Isn't that looking pretty, the way that star is coming together? This is when it starts to get exciting. And it's easy when it starts to get exciting to make mistakes because you start thinking, I got this, I got it, I've nailed it. I've, I'm, I've overcome all the obstacles. No, there are plenty of ways I can still screw this up. The objective is to not do that. So let me put these units together to make this one collective unit for those. So this is kind of interesting. On this one unit, I was able to press it open without any resistance. Maybe it's because of where my stitches fell on this side, but uh, that set of that set of seams back there did not give me resistance from pressing that open. It feels nice and flat. But on the next one, it it wasn't bad either. But my iron has something on it clearly. And uh, but it pressed open pretty nicely. The next two did not want to press open. Um, I don't know why that was giving me more resistance, but I didn't fight it. I just went ahead and pressed it to one side. I don't know that it's going to make any difference. I just chose not to be bothered. Okay, so I want to see my star come together. So I'm going to work on my middle row first put two sides of the middle square together. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I mean, <laughs> I am, I'm happy to see this come together. Our moving the needle on Saturday's method is working. One little bitty tiny stitch at a time, we're moving the needle and we're getting caught up on the four skipped blocks. One stitch at a time. I wanna go ahead and show you where we are at this stage. I pieced these two together and then I pieced these two together and I didn't really pick in any particular order. I just, I just picked them. So we've got top left, middle right and bottom left. So now finish this row, finish this row, finish this row and then add my rows together. It's coming together nicely and I'm, I'm pleased with it. There's still time to make a mistake. So I'm trying not to get too rushed. Y'all don't hate me. I thought I pressed record. I zoomed in and everything so you could get a really good shot of what the needle was doing. But all I did was piece together squares to make a row. You've seen that. It all went together fine. There were no issues, except I did not hit record. I don't know how this happened. I don't know if you can tell this edge right here, how it's not nice and square. It kind of goes in a little bit right here. It's really not showing up well on the camera, but it's going to make my block a little off. Can't help of that. I cannot help it at this point. Do not care enough to replace that whole thing because it's some of it can be caught up in the seam allowance 
And where it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world. My friend who's receiving this will not give it back to me because of it. I've told you guys before that it's my angels, people who leaned in to help me while I was in various stages of debilitating health that I'm doing quilts for. I don't know how long it's going to take because I had a, there's only a small handful of people, you know, um, but, you know, you don't cr create quilts. At least I don't, you know, you don't create quilts in a week's time. So it'll take a while to get everybody a nice quilt because I don't want it to just be a little quick four patch. I want it to be something meaningful. One of the first things I did when I could get back out and about again at all was I met up with everybody and found out what their favorite colors were and told them there would be a quilt coming. And I wasn't doing the YouTube channel at that time. I wasn't thinking about doing it. It just started to make sense to do the channel. So I can provide for myself. And so I can learn. And so I can have something to do now that I can do more. Something meaningful. And it's working out. Everything's all pinned. Ready to go under the machine. Last set of stitches. Yay. You know what I'm always surprised by is how much these things shrink when you start sewing all the units together. I kind of like going slow so I can keep track of what's happening. Kimberly Dolly says that she can go fast because she pins and I get that but number one I think she's more familiar with her machine than I am with this one that's for darn tootin sure hang on I'm gonna get a good handle on where this is going I want to make sure that pointed down should have put a pin in that one We're done, my friends. Oh, I hope it lines up nicely. Let's look at it together. I do need to spend time with my machine, um, getting to know it was not mine. We know that. Y'all saw how I um, got it from a friend and all that. I am, um, and it's just on loan, but it's teaching me a lot. I'm just finger pressing this open while I talk to you. I haven't seen the other side. I'm going to reveal it to you as I'm revealing it to myself. I kind of feel like there might be a section that's a little bit off. We'll see. Anyway, I feel like I need to take classes or just spend a day or two, find a manual or just find some online classes or something. Because I'm not tapping into its full resources. Um, and I still find it kind of awkward to understand how to um, find my quarter inch and just a lot of things that were second nature on my little singer. Just pressing this, finger pressing this open. Okay. Do we like it? I think so. I think it's fine. Let me press it. Before I start working tomorrow on my log cabin blocks for pick a pedal, I'm gonna clean in here. Clean, I'm gonna vacuum. Everything's gonna be orderly before I start. If you remember, if you watch the Pick a Petal playlist, that's I released 
videos on Sundays for that one. I got set up for success. Part of my moving the needle on that one was getting all my fabrics cut for the moody log cabin blocks. That's wrong. What am I talking about? My blue, I got deep blue going on for two different quilts. My moody blocks are for, what's the name of it? My moody blocks are for the piece and quilt sampler but I do have blue blocks for my pick a petal. All of my log cabin blocks are gonna be blue, but it's not meant to be moody, right the opposite. Uh, it is meant to be a just a field of blue, deep blue as a background for my applique flowers. I just wanna do things a little different. Okay, I'm gonna put some of this Mary Ellen's Best Press on here. So there is a little bit of, it's not really puckering here. Um, I don't know what you would cause, would cause that, and I don't know what you'd call it. It's not really puckering. I feel like that's the kind of thing that happens with ironing and not because of stitching. Like I pressed this shirt that I'm wearing today and there was a, an area where it did that and it wasn't puckering, it was in the middle of the shirt. You see what's happened here? This is where I told you I was off. No idea how that's happened. But I do have room to make that up in the seam allowance because my seam allowance should come down to this point and it's just gonna be a really narrow seam allowance over here. I hate that and I don't, you know, you make, the whole block, see how it's a little bit off here too? I was measuring everything as I went along, but you can still make mistakes, clearly. It's a happy little block, let's put it on the wall. When I called this a happy little block, I felt like Bob Ross of quilting. <laughs> it gave me quite the little chuckle. I'm gonna rearrange a couple of things. I need like, this room to have five walls on it. So I can have five different design boards. Okay. Taking this off because it was just there for um, sampling the idea of having color up there. I want to kind of just put it there and call it good because it'll look good there, right? It looks good there. But what I'm thinking is I want to see how it would look if it's down here, if I take this blue foundation paper piecing one that we just did and put it in this slot, swap these out so that we're pulling some of that green to the opposite side, or do we want to keep the green in one side? We talked about that, like how marbles have just like a line of color in them. Let's play with that first. That's the easiest, so let's just put it up. Do we like it? I'm pleased with it. I'm gonna leave it there for a little while. I wanna play with that idea in my head about just keeping the green in like a little bit of a line like you would see in a marble and not spread out so much. This, that was a whole idea with this, right? It's supposed to be marbleized sea glass because that's what the uh, one, one of my angel likes is um, a blue green. I hope I'm in the right color, you know, and the right values that she likes the blue and green. She's seen these, some of these blocks because she's looked at the channel a couple of times and I've posted some on my Facebook, my personal Facebook, and she's seen them and she's liked them. So I hope I'm in the right color of blue, the right hue and the right value of blue and green. I think they're awfully pretty. You got shoreline fabric from Camille Roskelly and you got men's shirt fabrics working together. And I do like how I'm using, you know, I'm supporting the designers, supporting Moda Fabrics, and like they, you know, are gonna be missing my few dollars. But I do like how I'm supporting them and supporting Camille, but I'm augmenting it with something that's cheaper. It makes my budget, you know, go a little bit further. It's a little bit more challenging. It's a little bit more unique. It just adds to the creative interest for me. I like it. I think we can call that one done. I think we're done.
I do appreciate you guys being here on this journey. Next Saturday, we're going to work on block five. I haven't even looked to see what that one is. I don't know if it's a hard one, an easy one, or what it is. And I haven't made the decision yet if all of the four that we're trying to catch up on, if they're going to be six inches or 12 inches. I don't know. There's no real rhyme or reason at this point. But next Saturday, we should be doing the beginning of block five, which is typically just coloring it. If it's an easy one to color, maybe we can also get that cut out. Regardless, we know what we're going to be doing. We're going to be moving the needle, <laughs> moving the needle a little bit every day and every chance we get. Do what you can when you can with what you got. Thanks for being here, following the journey, helping me learn, helping me grow, encouraging me. I really do appreciate it. I think we're doing all right. Thank you, guys. See you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye.